Buenos dias and welcome back to another video, my friends. I hope that you're staying healthy and I hope that you're staying safe wherever you are in the world. Today on the channel, I want to talk about the Canon EOS R6's interval timer. How to use it, how to set it up, and how to shoot star trails. So we're going to do our best to include the clock tower here over my left shoulder. Uh, I do have some hazy skies. Uh, they look beautiful. They're starting to move into blue hour and kind of lighten up and get that pink glow. But I hope there's not much in the form of clouds or in the shape of clouds because I want the night sky as clear as possible. Now one cool thing that light trails give you or star trails in this case give you is that you don't need or you don't need to worry about light pollution in this case um, so you're not going to see the milky way here tonight but you certainly can get star trails anywhere in the world so let's get started in setting up the camera the first thing i want to do is i want to get a solid shot for the foreground and this is going to be good this is the library over to my left and the uh, clock towers over to my right. Now the clock tower looks like it's leaning in the um, actual LCD screen and it is uh, but what I'm going to try to do is fix that in post. I could get it right here but the purpose of this whole video is to shoot star trails so I'm just going to focus on that. So I have a setting of one fifth of a second at f11 and I'm focusing like I said on the clock tower I have it on manual focus. I have ISO 2000. It's pretty dark out here already. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and use the touch screen. So that exposure that I set up was basically my, my one shot image that I'll blend back in as the foreground element. Now we'll go ahead and set up the star trails. All right, so the first thing we wanna do here is go to the shoot menu, which is the red menu. And I believe we go to page six and we set the interval timer and we enable it and then we come down here to info detail set and we're going to click the number of seconds now i've already preset it to 33 seconds but essentially you can click right there and add or or sorry add or subtract seconds there i'm going to leave it at 33 seconds what that means is that i'm going to use an open shutter of 30 seconds with three seconds in between each shot. It'll take the shot, leave the shutter open for 30 seconds, wait three seconds, and immediately shoot the next shot. Now, I'm gonna leave it not at 10 shots. What I'm gonna do is leave it at unlimited shots because I'm gonna try to leave it open for approximately an hour and a half or as long as the battery lasts, whichever comes first. Or if I get bored, I'm going to go home. <laughs> so it's set at 33 second interval. Again, that just means that it's all 30 seconds of the original open shutter and three seconds in between the shot. Um, other interval timers might just allow you to set three seconds. It'll leave the shutter open for however, you long, however long you wanted it, and then it'll uh, fire off according to your interval time. So this one's a little different, but um, a lot of cameras use this format as well. So now I head back to my screen and I'm going to open this up to 30 seconds. As you can see, it's blown out. It's not completely dark, so I'm gonna wait a little bit, but I'm gonna pull this down to F 2.8. But my ISO, I'm gonna leave it at ISO 800. Now we'll come back in a second and um, so this is the live view so this is a simulation obviously i don't want it blown out like this i need it to get a little darker so we will wait all right we're off and running utilizing the interval timer on the canon eos r6 um, again i have it at 33 second interval so that means it's going to uh, wait 30 seconds and that's also my shutter speed and then three seconds after that it will fire off again so I don't mind having um, star trails in this case, meaning that this, each star, each star is gonna be pinpoint, but I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a tail on each one, but that's okay because ultimately I want a nice full star trail or as much as possible in this case. So that's gonna be okay. So my settings to review on this uh, shoot are every shot's going to be ISO 800, uh, F2.8, and a shutter speed of 30 seconds. So I'm gonna let it fire off for about an hour and a half or until the battery dies, uh, whichever comes first. And then I will go ahead and we'll go back to the studio and we'll, uh, we'll edit this thing in post. All 
right, gang, I am back in the studio as promised, and I've loaded all the images into Lightroom. But before we get started, I did want to talk about star trails and getting concentric circles, meaning getting a pretty nice round um, star trail and as it expands outward from its center. So if you want to focus on Polaris or the North Star, just point your camera towards true north and you should be good to go. And the opposite is true if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, you would just point to true south and you should get concentric circles. Now this isn't something that you have to do, it's just something that you might wanna think about in terms of orientation or composition. All right, let's jump in to Lightroom. As you can see, here are all the images that I shot. There are 96 in total. These last two aren't going to be part of it, and these first two are not going to be part of the blend. However, I do wanna show you this one here. This is the image that I shot as the foreground. I knew that the um, bottom half or the foreground part of the image would be blown out, um, so I wasn't concerned because that is why I shot this one image here. So I will use this to blend it back in to our final um, concentric circle star trails image. All right, so let's go ahead and select this. Uh, I did edit this a little bit already and um, I'm not worried again about the blown out bottom half or foreground. Now don't get me wrong, you can expose for the bottom half of this image and get it a little bit closer to uh, a good exposure, but like I said, I just wanted to get one that was really set for what I wanted it to look like and then not worry about it and know that I could blend it in back in post later. Okay, so I've copied all the images. I'm gonna jump up here to File, Export, um, I'm gonna put it in a folder called Fullerton Star Trails. I'm just gonna call it Fullerton Star Trails or FST. Um, we'll just call it FST. And what I want here is I want to sequence these so it'll be FST1. And I'm gonna leave it as a TIFF file. Um, we are going to use a program, a free program that I'm gonna show you in a second called Star Tracks. So if you haven't used Star Tracks before, it's free for both Windows and Mac OS. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to export. And it's exporting those 96 files and we'll go into the magic of editing and we are now done. All right, there's one other thing we need to do. We're going to select all of our images here there's 96 in total. And we are going to rename the 96 items so they have a sequential or same case amount of numbers. So five digit, four digit, three digit. In this case, we'll just leave it at zero and we're gonna have a name and counter after the name. We're just gonna rename them. And you notice they all have a the same amount of digits in the actual file name. Now this is just important because Star, Star Stacks likes these numbers really in this kind of order. Um, I know we probably could have done it in Lightroom, but I just kind of used this step here to move forward. All right, we are now in Star Stacks, a free piece of software that you can get online again for both Windows and Mac OS. Um, you can use Photoshop. Photoshop has a blending tool that allows you to blend all the stars together. But what I like about Star Stacks is it offers a couple extra features, uh, especially uh, gap filling that is really helpful and just kind of creating a very nice concentric or very nice concentric circles for the star trails. All right, so we're gonna go up here to get the images and we're going to select from 000, zero all the way to 95. Again, that's 96 photos. And we're gonna go ahead and load those up. And over here under blending, we're gonna use gap filling. There is, you can try all these different types of choices, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose gap filling. What gap filling does is it tries to connect uh, from one line to another where there was a 
uh, mist area. Now it's not perfect, um, and in some cases, it's not gonna fill a full missing area if you didn't let the um, images go long enough. So I did about an hour and a half or 96 images. Perhaps I need 200 images to get nice, full circles or concentric circles. But in this case, I think we did enough. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave unchecked process images in reverse. I'm actually just gonna leave everything off. This I'm gonna uncheck, but what it allows you to do is create individual uh, images uh, from each step of the blend, which you can turn into a very nice little uh, movie which is really cool in the end. But we're gonna watch it live here anyways, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that, and it also saves some of the time here in the processing. I'm gonna go ahead and I think I'm ready. Um, well, let me show you images here. I'm gonna leave this as automatic in terms of the background. You can see it's dark. I'm just gonna leave it as dark and uh, image saving. I'm gonna use the compression, but I'm gonna have the best quality over here to the right. I could uncheck this, but I'm gonna leave it checked for our purposes here today. And I think we're ready to start processing. So this is the button here. And then watch the magic happen. All right, that's gonna do it. Um, there is a part here called threshold and amount. When it's, once it's all over, I just like to leave them both at around half, but you can mess around with this before the final uh, export. But once it's all said and done, you can go ahead now and save the image. And we'll call this uh, Star Stacks Fullerton. And we'll save it to my downloads. Go ahead and save that. So image has been saved. All right, we are on to the last piece of the puzzle, at least for my image. You sh could be and should be all done if you exposed for the foreground properly and actually worried a little bit more about the foreground than I did. But again, I shot that second image or that extra image just so I could do this now. So let's go through the process. You grab the image here from the center. You, whoops. You don't grab it if you don't have the select tool, All right? So you grab it here from the center, you bring it up there to the other image, but bring it right back down, drop it in, say yes. On this layer, we're going to actually create a mask. And then now what we can do, well, first what we wanna do is make sure those are aligned. There we go. Those are both aligned. They were shot with the same camera in the same position, so everything should be pretty well aligned. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to grab a brush tool. Oops, where am I going here? Here we go. Grab the brush tool, and uh, that's a nice size brush. Um, yeah, soft round, I mean, it's fine. Again, for our purposes, I just wanna show you uh, what we can do here and I'm gonna start revealing again right over here black reveals and white conceals so black is revealing all of that original image that I shot that I knew I wanted to bring back so I'm gonna do this rather quick so you can kind of just see the process I'm going outside of the lines and I'm going a little bit into probably areas I shouldn't be on the image but it's okay. As you can see how this works, I'm gonna go up here, overdo it just a tad. We can come back, try to clean it up a little bit, but inside of that, I think um, this looks really good. Okay, I'm gonna leave that just like that. I'll uh, minimize the brush size to a tiny little guy. Yeah, probably a little small. Oh, oops. I'll switch these again, and now I'm going to conceal, and I'll just paint around this edge here a little bit. Probably need a little bit bigger brush. That's 
a little small. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, this makes a little more sense. Okay, I'm getting a little sloppy here, but you get the idea. I'm gonna leave that golden top there, like a golden dome. Okay. And I can go back. Paint back in if I wanted to here. Got a little bit. So this takes a little bit more fine detail, definitely. Um, I understand that, so I'm with you. I'm with you on that. And essentially, voila, that is it. That is done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go up here and go to File, Save As. I'm gonna save it to my computer. Uh, we'll go FST, Foreground, Background, we'll just call it BG, uh, Mix or Blend. And we'll go ahead and save this to my desktop. This is the final image. You too can do this in any type of skies that you're in, light pollution or not. So get out there and try this. By the way, I have some merch. It's down in the description below. I'd appreciate it if you took a look at my store. That would be super awesome if you got something, one of the t-shirts. It'd be really rad if you got the um, Sunset Surfer. That's one of my favorites. Go out there and get it. Subscribe, comment, like this video, ring the bell for notifications when I post new videos. I love y'all. Until the next one, peace.